Morning, announcing the commencement of the annual purge. This July, have your voice be heard. I purged. I purged. Show your support. I purged because it's my civic duty. For the purge. I purge because staying in is an American. This is your emergency broadcast system announcing the commencement of the annual purge. The soul of our country is at stake. The Senate is going to win. She's going to make real changes. The purge has to come to an end. At the siren, all crime, including murder, will be legal for 12 hours. Senator, let's begin lockdown. All emergency services will be suspended. Your government thanks you for your participation. We're going to use this year's purge to do something about that, Senator. We're being hunted. Go, go, go! We are on our own. My God. How did it get to this? What you doing outside on purge night, Senator? Come with us. There are threats everywhere. There's death everywhere. No! Y'all need to see this. We have one goal. Survival. to keep my country great. In my humble opinion, I believe that something huge is about to go down in the United States of America this year, which will definitely impact the entire world. And you know, whether you call yourself a Christian or not, I think many of us can sense that something is about to happen. We cannot quite put our finger upon it, but even this disturbing trailer that you watch for a movie that is coming out this July 4th weekend, it was brought to my attention uh, by uh, one of my subscribers, Kathy Brown. I thank her for that. I had no idea that such a film was coming out. And you know, I got to tell you that now the elites to me are being so in our faces. It's not even cryptic anymore. You know, the messages that they're putting in a lot of these movies lately are really showing a lot of destruction showing the total societal breakdown of America and just the world in general. We're seeing a lot of killing. We're seeing a lot of violence, a lot of bloodshed. You know, these messages are so in our face now. It's not even really cryptic anymore. It's getting so obvious. And, you know, I really wanted to get into, you know, some of the things about this movie, you know, just from the outside looking in it can just seem like you know one of those normal killer kind of movies lots of you know violence and bloodshed and you know one of the run-of-the-mill killer kind of movies but really when we look into it more you know there are definitely quite the crazy messages that are being put in these films you know and again they're being very blatant they're being very in our face but there are still some cryptic things i'd like to to show you you know kathy made a point of saying that you know even the 923 that i've been discussing in quite a few of my videos that it definitely could still be pointing to a date, and I don't doubt that. You know, we spoke about how it points to plutonium, the 239 being the atomic number for plutonium, but 923 happens to be a date that is very significant on the occultic calendar. And let's just get into that right now. When we look at the Illuminati holidays, I've got a website here from Illuminati Watcher, a great article talking about how there are eight major nights of human sacrifice in the occult holiday system, okay? And they go on to list the actual dates. Now, these are all date ranges, actually, but December 21st, we know is the winter solstice, February 1st, March 21st, you know, the spring equinox, May 1st, which is May Day, of course, we know, uh, June 21st, August 1st, September 21st, okay, which we're going to focus on today, and October 29th to 31st, okay, so if you go, there's a, you know, you can find many uh, diagrams of this calendar, we've got the eight major high days, okay, of the occult, you know, of Wicca, of the Illuminati, whatever you want to call it, the mystery religions, these are their eight main days, okay, 
and something big happens. And like the, uh, the other uh, website just said, they actually require human sacrifice. If we go to another uh, website, as this is actually a, a blog uh, called Heaven Awaits, and they've got the occult sacrifice calendar, you can see that all these dates, you know, pertain to human sacrifice and what happens, you know, on those particular dates, or at least what their requirements are. All right. If we go to uh, another great website called Occult Holidays and Sabbats, okay, they speak of these things, okay, as to what happens, you know, on these days. Okay, again, giving more description, Illuminati Human Sacrifice Nights, again, on the winter solstice. Okay, you've got March 21 to 22nd. Okay, again, it requires human sacrifice nights. We know what happened on 322 this particular year. The, the Brussels bombings, okay, happened right on 322. Okay, so that which was March 22nd. So definitely things are going on on those days. Okay, the summer solstice, again, human sacrifice. The autumn equinox, human sacrifice. Okay, it's interesting how they note below that people like you and I, you know, the everyday people are considered profane and we're led like a flock of sheep to observe these important festivals of the mystery religion. You know, we don't even realize that our calendar is totally based on pagan holidays. We don't even realize that, you know, and we need to get, we need to get with it really, you know, to realize what is truly going on here. I believe that, you know, when, uh, when the pagan calendar came out and it took us off of the Hebrew calendar, we as Christians, you know, we really should be following the Hebrew calendar, I believe, not this pagan nonsense, okay, that has been, you know, basically, you know, shoved down our throats since, you know, for many years now, okay, so these are occultic festival satanic times, okay, so basically on these human sacrifice nights, you know, this article goes on to say that they their goal, okay, is to... Uh, have these following elements as part of their sacrifice nights, okay? And, and they're to be exaggerated to the highest possible degree, and that is trauma, stress, mental anguish, and sheer terror. The final act in the drama should be destruction by a fire. Hmm, fire could be nuke, fire could be, you know, any kind of fire, I guess, but I guess they want it the bigger the better, uh, preferably by conflagration. People must die as human sacrifices, especially children, since Lord Satan looks upon a younger human sacrifice as his most desirable. Okay, so you can see what is supposed to entail these human sacrifice nights. Again, there are eight of them. Okay, these eight, sorry, eight high days, excuse me, of these, uh, uh, of the Wiccan calendar, of the occultic pagan calendar. These are the high days and they require human sacrifice. Okay, and they're to be extremely exaggerated. If we go down, uh, in this, uh, it goes on to list all the requirements of all these pagan days, including Christmas and Easter, just as, we, as we've discussed before, Christmas and Easter are definitely pagan days, okay? But if we get to the autumn equinox, September 21st to 23rd, and again, the high day of this particular day, Maybon, okay, is September 23rd, 923, okay? So there's your 923 connection already there, okay? So in this time, from this day through Halloween, occultists believe the veil is separating the earthly dimension from the demonic realm. It gets progressively thinner, with the thinnest night being October 31st. This thinning of the separating veil makes it easier for the demonic realm to enter the earthly dimension. Thus, on Halloween, evil spirits, ghosts, witches, hobgoblins, black cats, fairies, and demons of all sorts were believed to be running amok across the land. They had to be back on their spiritual dimension before midnight Halloween, okay? So this is what they believe is happening, okay? So around the autumn equinox, the veil is thinning, you know, between the, the earthly dimension and the demonic, you know, dimension. And, you know, things are entering into, uh, into our uh, earthly realm. If you go to the Wicca website itself, they actually talk about this day, Maybon, okay? Again, this is what we're focusing on today, Maybon, the September, you know, autumn equinox, 923, you know, crazy date for these people. Okay, according to the Wiccan uh, a website, the autumn equinox divides the day and the night equally. Okay, so on that day, there's an equal amount of daylight and there's an equal amount of night. Okay, so sun and moon, okay, daytime and nighttime are equal uh, on that day. So again, symbolizing their dark versus light, you know, as above, so below. They love to show their duality. They love these kind of things. Okay, these are all occultic things that they love to celebrate, even though, you know, having a day that's equally, that has equal daylight and equal nighttime, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, the devil loves to pervert these things and use them for his purposes. And we take a moment, okay, as the Wiccans say, to pay our respects to the impending dark. We also give thanks to the waning sunlight as we store our harvest of this year's crops. The Druids call this celebration, uh, me and Fomir, and honor the green man. Hmm, interesting, the green man, nature, Sir Nunos, Baphomet, the two-horned god. 
the god of the forest by offering libations to trees. Hmm, see, they worship trees. That's where we saw a lot of tree imagery in, in previous videos. Offerings of ciders, wine. Okay, they talk about their sacrifices. What can celebrate the aging goddess as she passes from mother to crone? Okay, so the green man, I believe, is code for Sernunos, Baphomet, the two-horned god. The goddess, the aging goddess, I believe, is code for Semiramis, okay, Nimrod's wife, okay, the pagan Ishtar, Isis, whatever you want to call her, you know, from mother to crone as her consort, the god, as he prepares for death and rebirth, okay, so they're constantly celebrating this death and rebirth of Nimrod, Osiris, um, you know, uh, Semiramis, Ishtar, Tammuz, whatever you want to call it, this is what they're constantly celebrating. At this festival, it is appropriate to wear all of your finery and dine and celebrate in a lavish setting. It is the drawing to a family. You know what? I would never want to bring my family into something like this, let me tell you. As you prepare for the winding down of the year of the year at Samhain, it is a time to finish old business as you're ready for a period of rest, relaxation, and reflection. So, you know, again, it can sound all nice. It can sound so lovely. It can sound like, oh, you know, these witches or this wicker or the Illuminati, oh, they're not so bad. They're not doing such bad things, you know, and they talk about more things that have to do with this festival. But, you know, as we look at, again, at the bottom it says Maybon is considered a time of the mysteries. Hmm, mystery religion, mystery Babylon. It is time to honor aging deities and the spirit world. Considered a time of balance, it is when we stop and relax. Let's move my little self out of the way here. When we stop uh, and relax and enjoy the fruits of our personal harvest, whether they be from toiling in our gardens, working at our jobs, raising our families, or just coping with the hustle and bustle of everyday life, May your Maybon be memorable and your hearts and spirits be filled to overflowing. So again, it could sound so lovey-dovey, so, you know, warm, fuzzy kind of feeling, kind of nonsense. But really, that is not what it is about at all. They are not about a warm, fuzzy kind of feeling. They are very evil. Okay, this is not what is happening. If, if human sacrifice is happening on these days, then we definitely know it is not all warm and fuzzy feeling. This is not a good thing for humanity. This is not something you should be celebrating with your family. Okay, because again, this 923, this Maybon happens to be a big time of killing. It is a high day. It requires human sacrifice. Okay, even as on this particular blog, it says the same thing, you know, from this time of September 21st, the autumn equinox, one of the Illuminati's high human sacrifice nights. Okay, so I believe this is what they're showing even in this movie, because as we get to some of the footage from this movie, I noticed in the trailer that they showed some security cam footage. Okay, now on the security cam, they're not actually saying 923, but they're still mentioning a date. Look at this one, 3-21-2017. So this is obviously a date in the future, but 321. Okay, interesting. When we go back, okay, to the days of these people's, you know, crazy days of these, uh, you know, pagan days, 321. March 21 is one of the Illuminati's high human sacrifice nights. So here we've got on the security camera, right in this movie of The Purge, they're showing, you know, when you watch the trailer, when you, if you see the movie yourself, they're showing someone coming and shooting the sky right on 321. So human sacrifice being performed right on one of their high days, okay? Right on one of their high days, March 21st, okay? So there you go, that's happening, which the, the March one is called Ostara. Okay, so right on 321, we know what happened on 322 this year, okay? That major things are going on. Here's another one, 322, okay? Again, showing the skull and bones number 322, the one of their high killing days, okay? Again, you can see this kind of thing, 321. Again, the date of 321. So they are definitely showing us that, you know, things are happening on that particular day, okay? It is definitely a high day for them, okay? Constantly showing this. If you go to all kinds of pictures, again, you can see these dates being shown again, 321, okay? So, I mean, it's actually getting very obvious now, okay, that... This is definitely not something that is, you know, by coincidence, this is not chance that, you know, on the security cam footage in this movie that they happen to show, okay, this, uh, this, particular, this particular date. And again, it coincides right with their holidays, okay, of, uh, of Maybon or of whatever, or the spring equinox. These are high sacrifice days for the Illuminati slash the elite slash whatever you want to call them, the mystery religions, the mystery schools, all these people following this nonsense. This is what they're showing in this movie, all out killing. Okay, the purge is apparently a day where they're allowed to have a day of killing. There's no law. Laws are suspended. They're allowed to do all kinds of nonsense, go out and kill. You've even got American people that are saying, oh, I'm, I'm you know, I did it for my country. I, I'm part of the purge. You know, they make it seem like a great thing, but then they're doing totally psychotic things on this particular night. So it's almost showing like America has gone nuts. America has gone crazy. Okay, so something 
big is definitely, I believe, about to happen. They even show a scene with guillotines. Okay, we know that, you know, in the Bible, when it comes to the tribulation time, that Christians will basically be lined up to be slaughtered. Okay, I believe all the Christians that they catch as much as they can will be, you know, either executed in many ways, whether it's through guillotine or whether it's through shooting, whatever. But they're even showing this in this movie. I believe this movie is depicting the time of tribulation, I believe. There's going to be a big time of chaos. You know, possibly this chaos could even begin possibly before, you know, the actual tribulation. I don't know if whether the Lord's going to allow you know, a total societal breakdown to occur like this as what is being seen in this movie. But definitely they're showing scenes really to me that depict exactly what scripture says that the tribulation is going to be like people killing themselves, all kinds of crazy things happening. All right. If we go to uh, uh, one of the, another scene, okay, this one of the killers in the scene or in this movie is you'll constantly see this, you know, this uh, Statue of Liberty kind of figure. Okay, but it's got blood all over this person, all over the mask. You've got the double axe, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But I really want to talk about this Statue of Liberty. You know, many of us think that the Statue of Liberty is such a wonderful symbol of America, a statue of freedom. You know, it symbolizes freedom. It symbolizes independence, all that kind of thing. But, you know, if you don't know about the Statue of Liberty, have I got some news for you. If you go to uh, a website, and many people have covered this. It's not just this one website. Okay, they talk about some of the top Illuminati symbolism. And now we know that the Statue of Liberty, okay, carries something called the Eternal Flame, okay? She carries this torch, okay, which we even see in the Olympic Games. We see on many company logos this flame imagery, okay? So this light or fire actually represents something else, okay? It's, part, it's called the symbol of the Enlightenment, okay? So uh, the Illuminati, an Illuminati researcher, Dr. Stan uh, Monteith, claims that the Statue of Liberty is the pagan goddess Semiramis. Hmm, we just mentioned that name. The whore of Babylon, a homewrecker and a harlot. She represents the destruction of the old world order and the creation of the new world order. So what's interesting is that, you know, one of the biggest cities in the world, New York City, has this pagan god, Semiramis, which some have even uh, likened to Apollo because the face apparently is very close to the Apollo face statues. Okay, the face of this uh, liberty uh, is literally could be the sun god or the, you know, Helios, the sun god Apollo with the rays of the sun on the head. Okay, holding the flame, but it's showing dressed in a, in a, in a, in basically in a robe. It's almost like showing the whole transgender a man dressed as a woman, all that kind of nonsense. So you got so much of imagery in this Statue of Liberty. But the fact that this is right there in the harbor, right in New York City, facing New York City, it was even facing the Twin Towers as they fell. Okay, and it, it's, it, it symbolizes the destruction of the old world, which is the world we're living in right now, and the creation of the new world order. Now we've seen that that statement made in so many movies. I remember even in Captain America 2, you know, the main bad guy was quoted as saying that we need, in order to build a new world, we need to destroy the old one. Even in the new X-Men Apocalypse movie, you know, the uh, the main bad guy saying we need to, you know, destroy the old one so we can build a new world. Okay, so this researcher, Mar oh, sorry, uh, now this re Illuminati researcher, Mark Dice, which many of you have heard of, claims that the Statue of Liberty is an Illuminati symbol. The statue's radiant crowns rays are a symbol of the sun or enlightenment, just like we just spoke of. The enlightenment represents Lucifer, the torch bearer. So when they show this in this movie, this to me is a more accurate description of the killer Lucifer, of the murderer. He's been murdering from the beginning, as Christ said. Okay, this is a more accurate description to me of what the Statue of Liberty truly represents, destruction, death, you know, all this kind of stuff. Lucifer, the sun god, that's what he is. He is a killer, okay? The Olympic Flame Torch Rally was first introduced by the Nazis in the 1936 Olympics. Prometheus gave fire knowledge to humans. For this transgression, the king of the gods, Zeus, punished Prometheus to have his liver eaten for eternity by an eagle. Okay? Links to the Bavarian Illuminati. Weishaupt was aroused by the Zoroastrianism and philosophies of the ancient Parsis. He planned to use fire allegories in the symbols and rituals of the higher degrees of the Illuminati. The color red is prominent in the higher degrees of Illuminati priest and Illuminati regent, okay? So, the Statue of Liberty was designed by a Freemason also, Frederick Barholdi, okay? The name Lucifer means bringer of light. And if you look more to Frederick Barholdi, he was a French sculptor, I believe. He's the one that sculpted the one that's also uh, in Paris. But it was also, it was actually meant for Egypt to be uh, uh, something by the Suez Canal or something like that in Egypt or some kind. Maybe I'm not having the canal properly. 
uh, or I have, don't have the right canal in mind, but it was for something to do with Egypt because they all worship, you know, these Egyptian gods, or all these pagan gods. You've got many symbols showing this light, you know, the, the, the symbol for Columbia Pictures. Then you've got the uh, Prometheus, you know, gold statue outside the Rockefeller Plaza, of course, having the flame in his hand. Okay, the symbolizing knowledge, symbolizing enlightenment. In fact, I believe the original name for the Statue of Liberty was called uh, the uh, the Statue of Enlightenment, or you know, they think that they're enlight you know, lighting the world, you know, with the uh, knowledge of the Illuminati. So you can see what is happening here. Another thing I find interesting about the Statue of Liberty is that it sits on an eleven point star. Okay, you can count it. If you count all the points of this, what it sits on, it is 11 points. And we know that in uh, occultic pagan numerology, 11 is the number for destruction. Okay, so even it, it's also the number for the Hegelian dialectic, 11, 11, 11, problem, reaction, solution, where I believe that the government, you know, with the elites, you know, create the problem of, say, a nuke, say, some kind of destruction, false flag kind of nonsense. The reaction of the people, of course, is panic, pandemonium. You know, they need, they want peace and security. And, the, and of course, they bring in the solution, which I think is going to be martial law. Okay, so you've got the 11-pointed star that the Statue of Liberty sits in. You've got even this pyramidal kind of imagery. Okay, you've got the different levels of the pyramid. Okay, and then you've got, the, you know, Lady Liberty right there, which, again, I believe is Apollo or Semiramis. You know, Apollo dressed as a woman or whether it's, uh, whether it's ISIS. So you've got ISIS you know, facing New York City. It's no coincidence even that this terror group is named ISIS, okay? This is all by design, okay? When we dig more into these things, we can see what is going on, that ISIS is nothing more than a creation of the CIA and the world governments, I believe, are all involved with this, creating this pandemonium, doing all this nonsense so that they get people to give up their security. So when we look at this character in the movie, I believe this is what this represents. You know, you've got this person dressed as Liberty, but blood all over her, okay, and showing the, the double X. So I believe this is what the true meaning of the, the Lady Liberty is, is, so that the Illuminati is showing their plans in plain sight. It is Isis. It is Apollo. It is destruction. Apollo is actually the god of destruction, okay? So I believe we can see what is really going on here, all right? So even if you look at Revelation 9, okay, it talks about the, the beast, that comes out of the pit. And what is his name? His name is Abaddon in Greek, but in, sorry, in Hebrew, but in Greek, he has the name Apollyon. Okay, so this is, you know, the, the god that the Illuminati, that these people worship. I mean, they worship many pagan gods, but one of the chief ones to me is Apollyon, which I believe is Apollo, son of Zeus, which is, you know, Tammuz, son of Nimrod, you know, mother Semiramis. It's all the pagan Babylonian Nimrod religion all shown, I believe, in this Statue of Liberty, okay, which is what I believe is truly going on here. Of course, we saw that uh, this character also has this double X, you know, on the eyes. You know, most people think it just has to do with death, but I believe it's a lot more than that. If we look at this IXXI symbolism is everywhere. The Jesuits majorly use this in a lot of their, you know, their rings, their jewelry. Okay, it represents even the cube of Saturn. It represents, you know, this Nimrod, uh, this uh, Kabbalistic tree of life kind of thing that's going on. Okay, the IXXI is even 911. Okay, there's so much a similar cube of Saturn. Okay, you can see it also in the uh, in the occultic, you know, uh, what we think, what many people think is the Star of David, but it's not the Star of David. It's actually re re uh, represents the cube of Saturn and all this kind of Illuminati symbolism that is going on. So that to me, you know, them showing, you know, this character with the double X on the mask is definitely, I believe, uh, showing that the Jesuits, I believe the Jesuits slash Vatican slash, you know, Illuminati are behind all of these things that are going on in the world. The Church of Rome, Rome itself, I believe, is headed up there in the Vatican. And they are the ones, I believe, that are behind the elites, that are behind all these secret societies, that are behind the Masons. You know, all these behind the movies being made, these are coming all, I believe, from the Jesuit Freemasons that are running this world. And they put their symbols, their signs and symbols in everything. Okay, so that's what I believe we're seeing in this. Besides, you know, the imagery for Statue of Liberty, you know, the XX is also the, uh, you know, uh, uh, showing that it's the Jesuits that they, you know, the door is going to open. I believe the double X also symbolizes the door that's about to open to usher in Antichrist, to usher in chaos, to usher in all their destruction and their new world order. All right, then, you know, one of the main characters of this movie, her name is Charlie Roan. She's played by Elizabeth Mitchell. She's a great actress. I really like, you know, a lot of the stuff that she does. But 
she plays a presidential candidate. And of course, one of the main presidential candidates is, you know who, I didn't want to mention her name because I really can't stand the woman, you know, sorry to say, but I really, you know, I, even, I mean, pretty much all of the politicians to me are just all corrupt and are all part of the, you know, are all part of the same coin, really. But, you know, this person is being shown as, you know, possibly a person, a woman of promise that she's going to make changes, that she's going to stop the purge and stop these horrible things from happening. And, you know, she's being, you know, looked on as a hero and possibly someone that people should vote for. But lo and behold, of course, they show a scene with a bunch of suits in a boardroom. And one of them, you know, gets up and says that we need to stop this senator, that they want to keep the purge going. They want to keep these things going because I believe here they're showing, you know, who's really in charge, who's really behind the nations, who's really behind all the world leaders. OK, so they're definitely showing, you know, the true power behind every leader. And if any leader or actor or whoever doesn't go along with their plan, then they definitely want to kill them. They definitely want to get rid of them. Well, you'll see in this movie that they definitely, as you even saw in the trailer, that they definitely try to go after this, you know, after this lady, after Charlie Roan, who is running for president because she doesn't want to go along with the agenda. So, you know, we can see who is really in control. It is the elites, OK, the people behind the scenes, the shadow government that is pulling the strings. And, you know, all of this destruction that were, that is shown in this movie, there are so many other movies that are showing, you know, such chaos, you know, such as movies that are coming out already, like Batman versus Superman or the whole Captain America Civil War versus Iron Man. There are tons of battles, tons of chaos, you know, that is being depicted in these movies. All out destruction that is coming. You know, we even saw that in the first Avengers movie, so much destruction happening right in Manhattan. You know, we've seen so much of destruction even in the even in the last Superman movie, you know, with the, this same uh, character playing him. So much destruction happening when, when General Zod came to try and take Superman. So there is so many movies. It's not just this one, not just The Purge. Okay, that is showing so much destruction. You've got other movies as well. Even X-Men Apocalypse showing all kinds of destruction. You've got Superman versus Batman showing so much of destruction. Captain America Civil War showing destruction. Avengers showing destruction. X-Men Apocalypse showing destruction. So there is definitely a theme here. You know, you have to be blind not to realize what is truly going on here. And they are being so in our face now. It is so blatant. Okay, something big to me is definitely about to happen. And, you know, as we know, 239 is the number, the atomic number for plutonium. You know, and it could also be a date, you know, September 23rd. We already saw that 923 is one of the high days of, of Illuminati human sacrifice, okay, for, uh, for blood sacrifice, for killing, okay. So, you know, we can see that there are so many messages being portrayed to us. You've got 239, 923, 921, 922. The same date range from September 21st to the 24th is constantly shown, you know, in movies. You know, go figure that 239 is the atomic number for plutonium. And, you know, we are seeing this in so many movies, so much of destruction, so many cryptic messages being put out there. You know, even in the video I did about uh, the Invictus Games and showing the athlete with the 239 on his, on his, uh, on his uh, shirt and then the other runner showing the uh, the skull and bones number the 223 you know which reverse of course is 322 so there's so much cryptic messages going on so you know with the plutonium what i really want to show and end is that this 239 or plutonium or this code for nuke i believe is shown in many places many of you are familiar with the uh the X Files that just you know that they did they happened to do season eleven you know they did six episodes but in one of these episodes apart from a clip I'm going to show you later on but you know one of the episodes it was actually called Babylon okay because there was so much of crazy things going on but in a scene where Mulder is literally high on something okay he flashes these two things you know which we think are just like you know brass knuckles but when you look closely it actually says mush room. Okay, now people could just think that's just, oh, you know, he's high on some kind of drug and he's just showing that he's on mushrooms. But really, as when I saw that, immediately I thought of this, okay, a mushroom cloud, okay? So I'm wondering, you know, I'm really wondering whether this was code when, you know, Mulder here is flashing this, you know, mushroom on his brass knuckles. Is it code for this, for a mushroom cloud? Okay, we know that when a nuke goes off, an atomic bomb, hydrogen bomb, nuke, whatever you want to call it, it creates a mushroom cloud. So is Mulder showing a code? Is Fox Mulder giving us a code for something big that is coming? He must not, he's not really high on mushrooms. He's actually showing something. Okay, He was high on mushrooms, but it's code for possibly a nuke that is coming. Okay, that is going to be part of this whole 923 endgame to usher in their new world order, to usher in the, you know, the aliens, the, the false alien invasion. 
And, you know, in one of the, the scenes of the very first episode of uh, this X-Files season 11, there was an incredibly cryptic scene, not even cryptic really, but it almost pretty much gave away the entire plan of the New World Order of the elites. You know, they are really showing something big that is coming. And I will play that clip for you in just a minute. But I believe that something big is about to happen, you know, because another thing that I find really interesting is that they mention the alien invasion in that clip. They mention societal breakdown. They mention martial law. They mention the, the takeover of America and the world. They mention so many things in that one particular clip with this Ted O'Malley. You know, many people have said he's almost a uh, portrayal of Alex Jones. But Ted O'Malley here is trying to warn, you know, Mulder and Scully of something big that is about to happen. He's trying to show that the elites have a major plan in place and it's going to happen. They're going to stage things. They're going to have, you know, tactical uh, EMPs, strategic EMP, and EMPs placed in, in strategic places to go off at the same time. Again, EMP is code for nuke, okay, which Mulder also showed the mushroom again on his brass knuckles there. So are they cryptically showing us things, okay? And what I find real interesting of all these things is that on the Jewish calendar, if we go to the Jewish calendar, okay, September 23rd uh, is also the, the 20th of Elul, okay, we know that uh, the Shemitah ends uh, on Elul 29, which is just, you know, nine days later, okay, on October the 2nd of our calendar, but Elul 29, okay, is always the end of the Shemitah. We know that there's always been a crash, you know, at the end of the Shemitah, the past three Shemitahs, now, even last year, there was quite the crash, I believe, of $11 trillion that were wiped out. But could it be that because we're in a super Shemitah right now, the Jubilee year, could it be that something big is about to happen and they are going to stage something possibly, you know, from this date of 923. But see, the other thing I find interesting is that in the clip you're about to watch, which many of you probably remember, when Ted O'Malley, or I think Tad O'Malley, told them about this plan, he said it will most likely begin on a Friday. Okay, where the banks announce a glitch, you know, they close down the banking system for a week where nobody can withdraw anything from the ATM machines. But he specifically said it will most likely start on a Friday. And what do you know? That 923 of this year, okay, one of the high, you know, days, Illuminati blood sacrifice, which begins on September 21st, but the 23rd is the big day. Okay, it's a big day to the Illuminati happens to be on a Friday. Okay, this year, September 2016. The 23rd day of September, 923, just happens to be a Friday. Okay, so Ted O'Malley says in the clip that everything is most likely going to begin on a Friday. Okay, now I don't claim to have all the answers. You know, none of us do. I don't claim to say that definitely something big is going to happen on September 23rd of this date. Of course, many of us thought something big was going to happen last year on September 23rd and nothing happened. Of course, I believe there were many spiritual things that were taking place, you know, with the Pope being in the United States of America, you know, for that week. But is it that something big? Were we given a year's warning, perhaps? You know, the fact that 923 just happens to be a Saturday. The fact that Tad O'Malley is telling Fox, Mulder, and Scully that it will most likely begin on a Friday, you know, where the banks, you know, close down, shut down their system, where all kinds of, you know, uh, alien invasion, tactical EMPs, you know, a, a staged alien invasion starts happening, all this kind of stuff. You've got even, you know, Mulder, flashing, you know, mushroom when he's, you know, seemingly high on some kind of drug or he's drunk or something and he's dancing around like a fool and he flashes these, you know, these brass knuckles of this saying mushroom. Could it be code for a mushroom cloud? Could it be code for basically a nuke, 239 nuke going off? Could it be code for the fact that, you know, the, 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 the financial collapse is coming, the martial law is coming, the staged alien invasion is coming, and of all times, go figure, it happens to be a Friday, just like what Tad O'Malley said on the X-Files, okay? So I believe that something big is about to happen. I'm gonna play that clip at the end here and you just, you know, you you know, look into it and you decide for yourself what, I, what you believe. But I just want to put the warning out there that something big is coming. I believe that all this chaos, you know, we can always tie it back to the Bible. All this chaos, I believe, is shown in the Red Horse. It's called, you know, this passage from Revelation 6, the second seal conflict on the earth which is right after the first seal has come to conquer, which I believe is Antichrist, which I believe is going to be ushered in with the fake alien invasion. And then the conflict is the red horse where it says that he was granted to take peace from the earth, that people should kill one another. Okay, and he was given a great sword. 
So you can see what is, you know, what the word of God clearly says is going to happen in the last days. People will kill one another. We have seen in this movie, okay, many movies, Batman versus Superman, people are killing each other so much of destruction. We've seen in, in this movie, okay, the purge, that so many people are being purged or being killed, that Americans are taking upon themselves to kill so many others in this purge, and that the elites want to keep this purge going. We've got so many other movies talking about the purge. We've got this 239 being shown in so many movies. Okay, we've got, you know, right in the X-Files, this mushroom being shown here on, on Mulder's thing, on his brass knuckles. We've got possibly it being code for a nuclear attack or EMP, whatever you want to call it. We've got Tad O'Malley saying that it could most likely start on a Friday. And go figure, 923 this year just happens to be a Friday in September. All right, so decide for yourself. You know, I pray that you are in Christ. If you don't know Jesus, give your life to him. He is the only one that can save you from this. You know, we... Uh, have been told by Christ that he will guide us through tribulation, that he will help us. You know, I believe that the rapture of the church is going to happen one day. But until that day comes, despite whatever happens, you know, Psalm 91 also says that a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. So if you put your faith in Christ, he will uh, take care of you. He will guide you. You know, it doesn't mean that you might not, you know, might not survive some of these things. But I believe that if we have Christ, we are eternally secure because we will be in heaven with him. All right, so I urge you, please give your life to Christ. I believe that big things are about to happen in this world. And, you know, watch this final clip and decide for yourself. But please, I beg of you, please give your life to Christ before it is too late. God bless you. Radicals reached far back into the last century. But it wasn't until victories in Europe and Japan and the onset of the Cold War that political and economic conditions became perfect for actual execution. A conspiracy bigger and more secret than the Manhattan Project. More odious and far-reaching. No sooner had we defeated Germany than a new threat started appearing in skies over America. Drawn to Earth by the latest threat to extinction, the H-bomb. Explosions acting as transducers, drawing alien life forms through wormholes in spaceships using electrogravitic propulsion. Advanced extraterrestrial species visiting us, concern for mankind and the threat of our self-destruction, forestalling our annihilation through their own self-sacrifice, and crashes at Roswell, more importantly, places like Aztec. World leaders signed secret memos directing scientific studies of alien technology and biochemistry. Classified studies were done at military installations S-4, Groom Lake, Wright-Patterson, and Dulce. Extracting alien tissue, tests were done on unsuspecting human subjects, and elaborately staged abductions in craft using alien technology recovered from the down saucers. <laughs> including human hybridization through gene editing and forced implantation of alien embryos. Why do such a thing and lie about it? Our own government. Your own government lies as a matter of course, as a matter of policy. The Tuskegee experiments on black men in the 30s, Henrietta Lacks. What are they trying to do? That's the missing piece. But it's not hard to imagine. A government hiding, hoarding alien technology for 70 years at the expense of human life and the future of the planet driven not only by corporate greed, but a darker objective. The takeover of a well-armed multinational group of elites that will cull, kill, and subjugate. Happening as we sit here. It's happening all around us. The other shoe waiting to drop. It'll probably start on a Friday. The banks will announce a security action necessitating their computers to go offline all weekend. Digital money will disappear. They can just steal your money? Followed by the detonation of strategic electromagnetic pulse bombs to knock out major grids. What well, will seem like an attack on America by terrorists or Russia. Or a simulated alien invasion using alien replica vehicles that exist and are already in use. An alien invasion of the US. The Russians tried it in 47. You can't say these things. I'm gonna say them tomorrow. It's fear-mongering, claptrap, isolationist, techno-paranoia, so bogus and dangerous and stupid that it borders on treason. Saying these things would be incredibly irresponsible. It's irresponsible not to say it. Especially if it's the truth. <laughs>